So now let's let's go to again. Let's go to Phil's guest. Um, so, ma'am, w- would you like to introduce yourself? And and what I will do is I will spotlight you. You can do a screen share if you like. Um, I know you're using a pseudonym. You you didn't want to be too public with this. So I would say mm-hmm. just just go ahead and and uh, I I will I will spotlight your. In fact, I'm going to spotlight right. you I, I for can't, Yeah, I can't share my screen. I'm. Uh, we use MS Team with my work, so I don't know Zoom that well. Phil told me that somebody could do it for me, so my presentation was shared with someone. Um, yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah, and you know, Phil, Phil do, you, do you want to do it? Phil can share screen. Uh, I, yeah, I, do it. I just need to uh, uh, open the PDF just one second. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. It's just like I, I'm on. I'm I'm from my phone, and I don't have all the options, and I don't. I usually am pretty bad with technology. So. Hey, thanks again, and I'm gonna call you Natalie. Um, th- thanks again, Natalie, for being here. It's really awesome. I get a whole bunch of questions. I've been waiting for a week to ask. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Phil's been the wanting to talk to me, and I was stuck with COVID all week. I may have a few coughs during the presentation tonight. So, so basically, I I wasn't too sure what to expect tonight. Um, but what Phil told me is that you were discussing anti gravity and black matter and stuff like that. And quite a few years ago, um, we have a common friend, and and we just we met, and we started chatting and. Um, you know, it's not something I share a lot, um, but I have witnessed the UFO in 2016. And uh, so I'm always very nervous to, to talk about that. Um, and it's hard for me to process everything that happened, but I'm gonna try to share it to my the best of my recollection. Um, but you have to understand that it was kind of, um, I'll explain a bit of the process, but it, it's kind of, uh, it happens and then it's like too large, like it's too big to be through true. And then you, you kind of try to memorize, like to remember it piece by piece. So so it may, may not be perfectly accurate, but I'll just walk you through my experience. Um, Phil thought it would be of uh, interest for, for the group. Um, I've so got it's, uh, the PDF ready right now, so. Just let me know when to switch pages. Wait, okay. So you can actually go to the, the, the other slide there right now, if you don't mind, Phil. Okay. So it's, um, yeah, so for me, well, just, I, I wanted to let you, let you know a bit of who I am. So I'm, a, I'm actually a 45. I'm a mother of two. My sons are 15 and 19. Um, the experience I will tell you about happened on October 26, 2016. Um, so I'll do my best to, to, to walk through, through the experience, but it, it's, I, I mean, I, I, for some of it, there's no words and English is my second language. So I'll really try my best, um, but I'm also open to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, what I do for a living, I'm actually a um, uh, manager for values and ethics for government of Canada. And I've been at, for, working for government for 25 years now. Actually, it's going to be 25 years in June, so very close to it. Um, I'm very, I'm still looking for answers um, about what happened to me. And it's the first time I actually talked to about this to a group, so I am nervous. <laughs> and um, I've consulted two experts uh, so far uh, from the, um, uh, uh, the Quebec side. So there's... Um, um, Mr. Cazzo, who written, who's written quite a few books on UFOs and aliens and stuff like that. So he's the first one, because when I was doing the research, his name would come up. So I wrote to him to, to, to um, try to find some direction. I, I didn't know uh, where to go. And I also worked with Steph Francois Bourbeau, who tried to have hypnosis done on me. And it just didn't work out. He believes it's because I know too much. So I, I don't know. And I know there's a lot of stigma uh, when we talk about paranormal experience and UFO sightings. So um, it's uh, for me, I, I've mentioned to Phil, I wanted to keep this quite uh, 
not really anonymous, but kind of anonymous, just because I don't know um, what the repercussion could be on, on my career and on other sphere of my life. Um, I'll try to share with you also some experience that came after I saw the, the UFO. Um, so basically it's, um, I'm here to, to tell you my story and uh, with the impact that on me and answer your question, that's really informal, it's a discussion. So please like don't, you don't have to wait till the end to, to, to ask your questions <laughs> and we'll just go through that. I think it's about, it's gonna last about an hour. It could be less. It really depends on what you, you, you wanna know. So um, as I mentioned, I'm, um, I know I've said it so many times, I'm nervous. Um, but I, I'm a person who's really also more introvert in life. Um, but I have enjoyed a few years of, um, uh, perf like I actually really like performing arts. So this helps me a bit tonight because I'm talking to the group. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll skip a few slides. Um, uh, Phil, we can go to the um, facts about my sighting slide. Um. So it's, um, ah, so yeah. yeah, thank you so much. So I'll try to tell you the story as much as I can. So it happened to me five years ago, more or less. It was October 26th. And I remember that night I had a coat on. So it wasn't cold and it wasn't really, um, uh, it wasn't hot anymore. Um, I would say one or two degree, maybe three. Um, I had my big army boots on. So it was kind of a, a really nice evening, but I do remember the sky being uh, grayed out by clouds. So, so it was uh, not, not, not a lot of light um, and it was very, um, like you couldn't see a sunset or whatsoever. Um, I was taking a walk. Actually, I started like, around that time, like I think 2016, June or something, I had started playing Pokemon Go with my son. So I was out that night walking and uh, every night I would make a point to, 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 to go for, I would try to do three to five kilometers. And usually it was just like to try to get some air and decompress from the day of work. And I remember that um, that night I usually would go a bit later, like around nine. But that night I had to go early because it was um, actually my, my son, my oldest son, he's 19 now, at the time he was 14 or 15. And he had to babysit and uh, he couldn't take, he had something at school. So I had to replace him at the babysitting job. So I said, you know what, I'll just go early for my, for, for, um, for my walk. And I, I didn't notice that the neighborhood was so quiet. Like I usually I would walk and people would also be playing because at the time the game was quite popular. And um, I, I would see people walking their dogs. And I remember that that evening, it was so, so, so quiet. And then it's, it was on my left side. I, I, would, I turned on La Rue de Belleuil, which was close to my house and there's a big park there. And on my left side, I started, I was listening to my iPod at the same time and those lights were kind of changing and I kind of thought it, would, it was a plane, but I just noticed a weird pattern in the way it was flying. So I, and it was um, switch, switching from like a, uh, white, blue and red. So I was like, well, maybe it's a planet. Like it, at, at that time I wasn't too intrigued but then I started seeing it was kind of jumping around and taking different directions. And it was quite weird. And there's that big vibration that took, I don't know how to explain it. It was everywhere and it was going through my body. And so I remember taking off my, my air, like my, um, my, my earpiece, my headphone, um, because I was, I, I didn't know if it was a sound or what it was. But the closest thing it reminded me of 
was when I traveled to Thailand, I went to a temple and they had that huge gong with like a very, like a, it's a deep sound, um, almost like a bass and you could feel it in your body. And it was that type of vibration where it's, it's just very present and it was everywhere. So, so that really, then I really started to be intrigued. Um, and so I started wanting to follow the lights because I could see there was some movement there and they were kind of starting to, um, to, 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 to like they, they were now taking a direction. So I was running um, and uh, trying to, I didn't want to lose the, the lights of sight. So between the houses, the houses, I could see the lights. And then I got into the park and, and the lights, <coughs> they just like went straight, straight away. And I was like, oh, okay, that was weird. And I thought that was it for the night. And then I saw it starting to come back. And then it's, it started to, to, to really have a, a descent. And it's, can you, do you see it's, it slid? Um, so it was just like sliding away, like just not sli like sliding towards the park and towards me. And it changes from that white, blue and red little lights to, to like orange lights. And it's, it just got weird. And I was curious and I, I was wondering at that time, I remember having that moment where I was wondering, what am I looking at? Like, is this a drone? What could this be? And I was trying to match it to anything I could recognize from being something I know, something of this earth. I don't know, like, I, and then I was like, okay, so I, you know, at, the, at first it was like a, a tiny thing in the sky. So I'm like, well, maybe I'm, my perceptions are wrong. So maybe it's, it, maybe it's just a drone, maybe it's, and it was descending and quite fast actually. And again, no sound, just gliding, gliding very um, smoothly. And the vibration was still there. And my, my, my feet, I'm just trying to figure feet or foot, but the two feet, they were like stuck on the ground and it felt, and I don't know if you recall those um, rides uh, when in Canada, we have La Ronde, but any amusement park used to have those. Um, it, it, you, it's a circle and you, it would turn so fast that you would kind of stick to the walls. They don't have those anymore, not in Canada anyway, but they had those uh, up until I was like nine or 10. And so it was kind of that feeling that you're, there, there, there's just so much energy going around that my, I, I couldn't walk anymore. I was actually being um, glued to the, to the, to the, um, uh, to the ground. And um, I was looking around and I saw there was somebody else in the park. So I, I, shouted to that person I, I said do you know what we're looking at because this is really freaking me out right now and the person was standing still looking up really like um immobilized by something but as soon as I talked to the person the best way I could describe it at the time it was like he had a an epilepsy like epilepsy crisis right in front of me or doing the bacon dance but on his foot like it's like I disturbed something and um that really like at that point I, I no longer felt safe at all um and but I even though I didn't feel safe I remember like two three times my, my body would just turn down, I would become immobilized, I would look at that thing, then I would have those discussions in my mind, like my mind was working fine, and I was like, I want to take a picture of this thing, and then my, my body wouldn't do it, and then I, I really forced my body to try to, you know, press on the camera button on my phone, and then I started having that discussion where I, I, I just couldn't take a picture, because if I would, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't see my family anymore. So I, I wasn't too sure what was happening there. Um, and not, none of this made sense to me. But I, I remember at one point, I was like, I just have to leave. I have to replace my son at the babysitting thing. So I, I and that was, 
it, it kind of kept me focused on something I have to do. And I kept telling myself, I don't have time for this tonight. I don't have time for this tonight. Please leave me. I have something to do. I have to go. And I was able to, to, to take my, my two uh, feet and just like start running. And then I started seeing everything in black and white. And that has always been for me a sign that I'm about to faint. And I was like, I can't find, I can't find a faint. I don't have the time for this. I don't want to go on that thing. I don't know what it is. Um, I was just so, so scared. But I have to say though, that when looking at it, I was scared, but I was also thinking this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So there's really these two parts of me, one like not understanding what I'm seeing and the other thing being amazed by what I'm looking at. And it's a, um, it's really a, a um, and I, we can go to the next slide because I tried, it took me quite a few days to try to, to, to find an image of what, um, something close to what I've seen. So the next slide will give you that, that image that I've modified as well, just to, to, to give a sense of the, uh, the park and where I was. Um, but in my ad, all I was, I was, I was repeating like, there's circles within circle and there's about, and I was trying to count, I'm like, there's about seven or eight rows of circles. And then there was those rays all, uh, all around and the rays were turning left side. I, I could remember like telling myself it's counterclock. So that sounds contraire des aiguilles de l'horloge. So it was counterclock. So it, and I don't think the machine was turning. I, I like it was the, the lights that were actually turning. I, I think that the, the machine was just kind of sliding. So it got so close that I, I was able to figure out when I went back to the park after the experience that it was about 15 meters big and it was at the height, uh, I think you say a two story house. So in Maison à deux étages, you can correct me, Phil, if I'm wrong. But it's, it's like, it wasn't far from the ground at all. It was quite close actually. Um, so that's, that thing just parked there. Um, and like, I, I, and I was just, by the time it was getting, it was almost parked. That's when I started running because I didn't want it to go. I fainted and I don't know when it was parked there. I can't be sure. I have a sense there's been a flash in my back. And once that was done, I just thought, okay, I'm all right, all good for tonight. And always that, that, that thing of like, I'm okay for tonight. It was always coming back. And then it was kind of strange because it kind of snapped. And I was in the park, in the ground, and I couldn't, I didn't know why I was, I'm gonna cry. So I didn't know why I was in the park. And then I was having an as I have asthma and I was in the middle of a crisis and I couldn't remember why I was I, I, I at a crisis. And then I said, I was like, what happened? Why can't I breathe? And then I said, holy shit, I just saw a friggin' UFO or something from the sky. I don't know what it is. And I just looked up and just in time to see that thing going in the clouds. And then that was it. So I ran home at the time I was still with the, the father of my two sons. And so I was, I couldn't breathe. I was crying. I had to get my act together because I was babysitting now in 10 minutes um, and I just uh, and I, I was crying and I was like shaking and so he comes to the door and is like what's going on and I said I don't know I, I don't like I, I, I think I just saw UFO like and I tried to explain it to him and it was kind of weird because he what he said to me was I, I don't like that I don't like that you've seen that he says, he says, I don't know much about UFOs and I don't know much about these things, but what I've heard is that when they are able to see them, it's because they've interacted with you before and I don't like that idea at all. And I, so I, I stopped for a minute and I said, have I ever told you that I saw UFO before? He said, I don't know, why? 
I said, because you've said that before. Like, I, I remember that exact same comment from before. And then we just, uh, I, I can't remember if it's that night or if, it's, if it, it's a bit later on, but we figured out that in the previous house about 10 years before that, I came home running with basically the same experience, but we had both forgotten about it. And I don't know why we forget about that because it's so incredible. Um, and um, so, <coughs> sorry. So, um, and then for the next two, three days, like, so I was very, I would say intensively scared for about 20 minutes and shaking and like really in a panic mode. Then I had to, but I had to go, I had to go, um, uh, yeah, I, I had to go um, do the babysitting. So I, I had to switch it off. And, but what I realized, then I went to the office the next day and I was talking about it actually. But it was like I was talking about it being disconnected from the experience. So I was like, hey, guess what? Like I've seen a UFO yesterday and I'm thinking of that because it was the size of this office. And people were just looking at me like I was crazy. And I would have done the same if somebody else would have told me that story probably. But I was so disconnected from the experience. And then, um, so that happened, it was a Wednesday, I believe. By the Saturday, I panicked again. And I just sent to Frédéric, my, um, my, uh, the, the father of my kids. And I said, Frédéric, um, have I came in the house this week, like kind of in a panic and like saying I've seen a UFO or something like that, like something strange like that. And he said, yes, you did. And I said, okay, he says, why are you asking? I said, well, because I'm not sure if I've dreamt this all or if it actually happened to me, but it, it's very vivid. It's like, it's real, but it's surreal. So I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but I said, well, why haven't you talked to me about it anymore? Why haven't you asked questions about it? And he said, I don't know, it never came back to mind. And I'm like, how can't, I, I said, I don't know, I'll, 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 we can all forget about that. But then my son also came in and said, oh, no, I remember mom, like you were panicked and, and it was kind of scary for us too. So that's the beginning of me remembering like exactly what happened. And my, my memories of that night, I think they came back in about three weeks or months, bits by bits. Um, I'm not sure I have the old recollection of the memories till at the, at, to this day. Um, but then having that happened, um, so I'm just gonna, just gonna make sure I don't forget anything. So having, having that happen, I was, um, I got, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I had never seen the movie uh, how was it called? Uh, Raconte Troisième Tip. So encounter, encounter of a Third Kind, I believe in English. And so it's one of my friends that I trusted and I, I, I told her the story and she was looking at my behaviors and she said, oh gosh, you remember, I, you make me think of that guy in, in Raconte Troisième Tip because he became obsessed with what he'd seen. And then she told me about the sounds and she said, you should really look at that movie. And I'm not sure I was ready at the time. I finally took the time to see it, but I don't remember when in, in the storyline. But what I do remember is that not too long ago, uh, not too long after that, the movie Arrival actually came to the theaters. And I wanted to see that, that movie and I really like uh, Amy Adams. And what struck me in that movie, at the time I was not, I was still a bit disconnected. I would have to look in the timeline lines when it came to the movie theaters. But I do remember that what struck me is her relations with time. 
because and actually it's my friend that friend who told me to to watch the um Rencontre Troisième Tip she said you have to see this movie Arrival because you know when you discuss time with me you have that different perception of time because I've always said oh for people like time is kind of linear for me it's like bubbles and I can jump in the bubbles from the past to the future and that's been with me all my life so um so she said it's kind of funny because her relations to time is very similar to yours so so she said when I was looking at that movie I was thinking of you and your experience and thinking that the person who wrote this movie must have looked at witnesses, testimonies and stuff like that to, to come up with the story because there's too many similarities. And then um, I, so I, I remember, I think it started with the movies, then I was able to start reading a few books. And what was um, weird with the books was that some of the dreams I've been having my whole life were actually written down in those books. And, um, and Frédéric, um, we had been together when I was like 18 and 19, then I, we, we left each other, then we came back together, I was around 25, and we've been together for 17 years after that. So he's known me for a long, long time, so he was able to, um, I was telling him, is it just in my mind? But I've I told you this dream, you know, there's the apocalypse and I'm telling, I'm giving people directions or there's this thing happening on earth and I have to save my baby and there's obstacles and I, I, and I see my family die around me. And, or, you know, I'm in this tower of control and that we have to, uh, uh, and I'm learning how to, to fly a ship or I'm learning. And, and then anyway, so, and he was like saying, telling me like, it's actually very strange because you have told me um, um, similar stories to that. Um, and then going through the, and I know I'm going beyond the, but whenever, I saw this UFO, like this sighting in particular, because it's the one I remember. Now I know there's been many more in my life, at least two or three, I think there's more. Um, I don't remember them, but just it's that feeling like all my life, I've had these experiences um, where I, I, you know, it's really, it, it, it's so strange to talk about it, but I, the lights I've been seeing in my house, even as a child. Um, uh, thanks, Phil, for following up with the, um, with the PowerPoint. Um, so I, I, I just realized that uh, I, I saw many of them, um, that I most likely have been in ships, and it's so weird to say something like that, um, but I had those, uh, rem and I could remember being at it, being in a tube. I can't explain it, but I know I have needles in my neck, and it's the same feeling I had uh, with the UFO, with all the gravity or the, the 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 energy going on. So my mind works, and I'm just in that tube with the needles in my neck, and I'm just trying to take my my feet off the ground, and I'm like, <laughs> it's funny. Like, I mean, I. I just don't control my body anymore. Like, and so, and I'm not scared. Whenever I have those recollection, I'm not scared when I, I'm in that moment where it happens. I get scared when in my, I'll call it my human self or my, 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 my being from earth. Like when, when I think of that, all that, I'm just like, that, that's really weird. Like uh, I should be scared. Um, this is not normal, this is weird. Um, and then I've had, um, so I started, and it took me lots of courage to talk to my family. I come from a family with a very, very strict Catholic background. So you can imagine that these things just didn't exist when I, uh, like all my life. So I was living through things and I was, um, I, I was actually, um, 
um, trying, I had a few friends I could trust, um, but I, to talk to my family was a strange thing. But I, I actually said to my sister once, and that happened after, and I'll show you out some um, pictures. I'm not sure it's too clear, but there's actually a day where I woke up with scars. And I didn't realize right, right away I had scars, but it was itchy and I was like scratching. And then my son, my youngest son said, um, said, oh yeah, my arms are itchy. And I said, yeah, me too, it's so strange. So I start looking at him and I see he has two scars that he never had before. And then I look at my arms, I have the same scars and they're all six centimeters and they're uh, three centimeters um, uh, where there's the, uh, hmm. The fold for the elbow. Um, so, so the first one I, I noticed were were about the um, were in the arms. So anyway, so I once that happened, I I took the courage. I spoke with my sister, and I said, like I said, I think I can trust you on this. And anyway, and we started talking, and she said, you know what? She said, there's been this weird experience for me for me when. I was pregnant of my last um, kid. She has three, so with her daughter. And she says, so I'm in that place on a bed and they're taking my baby out of my belly. And I tell them, give me back my baby. Like give me baby, my baby right away. And they say, no, no, don't worry, it's gonna be fine. And then they put the baby back in, in her belly and then um, they, take her to visit a room and there's different jars and they say, these are all your babies. See, like you're, you're fine. And, and, and so she could remember that, but she said, when, once my daughter was born, I, I forgot about that because my baby was fine. But now that you're telling me all these stories, I'm, she says, I'm just thinking of this. And I said, you know what? Give me a second. I'm taking a picture of the book I just read sending you um, sending you a page and it's a lady explaining exactly exactly words for words what my sister has told me so then I learned that they usually look at bloodlines and um, it, it would make sense because we realized that uh, even my youngest son um, told me one time about a year after the, the, the experience when I saw the UFO he said you know mom I often say that I miss our first house that we had. And I said, yeah, I know, but you know, like our new house is, is as good. He says, yes, but then this and that house, at night, I would touch the wall and it there would be a door of light. And then I would walk in that tunnel to go to that place. And it felt so good. He said, mom, I could live this once more. like." and then I could die, I wouldn't care. I just wanna go through that again. It was so awesome. And I said, wow, I don't wanna hear you say that because it's really hard being your mother and hearing you say that you could die. Um, but then I said, I think I understand that feeling because I felt that actually um, being in that room where I, it's really hard talking about all this, but um, I had a, um, a small surgery in the hospital and I had, I was 19 at the time and I, I never knew how to explain what happened, but I remember being in that room where um, it was, it was like the, the light was, um, everything was white and there were those kids. And I just thought they were kids who died with cancer. Basically, that's how I explained it to myself. And that I just switched um, dimension for a little while and I was able to see them. And then I heard my mom calling me back and I came back to her. But I remember in that um, place with all the kids, all the, um, all the kids with that, like, I mean, so much love was felt in, in, that, in that room. So anyway, so all these things, I know it doesn't make sense. Like it's not linear because the, the memories just came back. Like it's, it's really bubbles. And, um, and when I started, uh, I worked, or I've been interviewed a few times by the two experts and they actually triggered some more memories for me. 
uh, one memory was, I always thought it was uh, an entity. I would call it an entity, but I thought it was a spirit. Um, but I was in Lac Megantic. Um, uh, for a little while, I, said I used to do performing arts. So I had a show to do in, um, in, in Lac Megantic. But in the bed and breakfast during the night before the show, um, I woke up, I couldn't breathe. I had my eyes wide open and I had that face floating about five inches from my face. And all I could remember was, I, I want this to look human. I want this to look human. This can't be. Um, and I, so for, so when I was able to, to, and then I kind of fainted and then I woke up again, sat on the bed, I was crying. I was able to wake up Frédéric. I did the show the day after, the day after. My, my voice was all scratchy because I, I didn't sleep and I had screamed in the night and all that. And um, so when I was working with the expert, they say, well, why were you saying I wanted to look human? I said, well, I don't know. I never, I, you know, I, I guess it didn't look human. So then they said, what did it look like? And it took me a while, but I could remember those, the eyes were just too big, too big to, to be normal. And they were um, uh, lime green like our apple green, like really like a, <coughs> and the face was like too, too long, too thin uh, in the bottom. Um, and uh, so there's all these memories that I've been triggered. Uh, I, I knew about the, these memories and I would tell the stories, but I had never, never thought it would be related to aliens or whatever. I just thought it was, you know, weird things happening in my life. Something else that was weird um, during my pregnancies. Um, the first one, the both pregnancies were actually um, difficult. And for both pregnancies, I ended up as, um, asking to keep my babies. And I didn't know who I was asking that to. I just wanted to have the, the, the right to keep my babies. And um, I remember that for my first son, I kept having those, I would call those hallucinations, but I would walk downtown Ottawa during my lunch break. And I would see those big beings about seven foot. They, they would at least one, one head like over the other. And they were like big bugs. Uh, it happened three times, I, I believe during my, my first pregnancy. And I remember asking colleagues, when your wife was pregnant, did she uh, mention stuff like that, like having hallucinations or bad dreams or, um, and they said, no, that's weird. And I said, yeah, it is weird. And I just kind of brushed it up. Um, I had weird experience like that with my second one as well. And I just couldn't explain it. So I just kind of went on with my regular life, you know, focusing on what I, I, I could focus on uh, to try to, say um, healthy. Um, so I was trying to think of uh, doing things I like, doing music, doing photography, um, working, raising my kids. Um, but since 2016, it's like all these experience from the past, I, I, I don't want to reimagine them, but some of them, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that time when I was in the university residency and there was that black shadow thing sitting on my stomach and I couldn't breathe. And, um, and my roommate put the keys in the door and it just kind of flew away. And, I, and she came in the door and I said, thank you, thank you. And she said, why? So I can't explain it, but there was that thing sitting on me and not on my stomach, but on my, um, uh, so me put on my lungs. Um, and so anyway, so all these, uh, I understand that it, it sounds crazy, um, but it's been part of my life forever. And I think that sighting just kind of opened the door for me where I have so many questions because I realized that I tried to explain life in a very um, not complex way. 
and um, it, it's so much more complex. And um, now I'm seeing the pictures that um, Phil is showing. So while I was doing all my research, um, I actually decided to buy something. It's a full spectrum camera. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I have all these memories and I've seen this thing and I still, I don't even believe myself. I need something that I, I can trust. And so I said, maybe, you know, the full spectrum camera will give that to me. And um, so I would actually um, film four hours a day, maybe I would put it on my deck and then I would analyze all the images. And, um, and I was able to see quite a few things. Um, I, I would eliminate so many things like bugs, birds, uh, anything that I, I wasn't sure of. Um, but there's a few of the most, um, and what I would notice would be usually like just a small light that would be moving. It usually would, um, it, it would, it, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it wasn't reflecting a light. It was a light in itself. And when I would notice that movement on the screen, I would zero in and then I would try to see what is it? Is it a bug? Is it a bird? Is it? And sometimes it would, on about 400 hours of movies, I don't even have like five minutes of stuff that I, I've kept. But these two pictures that you're seeing, um, like the one with the blue, um, was pretty clear there was like three um, lights on that one and there were three ships close to that um, and to my house um, and that and uh, so the movement on the movie was actually making it um, uh, easy to see and I think this is the one as well just before disappearing it kind of sent a, a, a um, it pitched light, like it's kind of, it's kind of did a light, not a lightning, but it did something and then it just disappeared. And then there's the other one um, with a very um, weird shape that I was able to match with some um, um, UFOs that are known to man. So I was like, these are, these for me were, were like, I guess the proof I needed in, in this world to, to, to tell me that, you know, um, what I've, I've been seeing, um, because for a while I was actually asking myself if I was crazy. Um, and it's really hard to find people to talk about this stuff. Um, you will see if you would just want to go the, the, to the slide before where there's the scars. Um, some of the scars actually happen, like the one um, with my my ankles, um, those actually happen after I decided to speak to some people. So the next morning I had new scars and the one with a triangle with a circle, I remember asking, I said, well, apparently there's, with my research, they say that if you've been through this, it's that you've decided or that you've agreed to this. And I'd like to know that because I can't remember and so the next morning I had that new scar and it's Frédéric who actually said, it looks like a hiero hieroglyph, like it's, it looks like a symbol of some kind. So I, um, so we, we, I started searching for symbolism in Egypt and all that. And it's actually Frédéric who found the exact symbol um, from an abductee site. And it said that uh, there's the uh, open uh, triangle with the, the circle is the master raised, the, the raised and there's the, the, the triangle with the inward um, little um, feet and ins like inside the triangle, that means compliant. And if it's outward, apparently it's because you're a slave. So I was like, okay, so I guess that's my answer. I, I've asked a question. And then there's these brews that I, I, I woke up with and they were very darker than that. But before I realized that they weren't normal, it took me a few days because you wake up with those things. <clears throat> and I don't know why, but my brain just discredits them. And then after a few days, I was like, hey, wait, I, I don't remember having 
this done. And I remember that one of the, the three brews had like a needle mark with a drop of blood in. Um, so that's another thing. Uh, and I, I made some research and I saw that some abductees actually had those. And I'm still having a hard time saying that I'm an abductee, but if I'm looking at the literature and I'm looking at my experience, I'm like, well, there's a good chance that I am. Um, I, one of the experts actually thinks that I most likely have many hybrids, kids on, on ships. And I said, well, that's a theory. And it could be, but I have no proof. So, so you know, so even I'm debating uh, all this. But the thing is that I'm going through stuff that not many people are going through. And um, I am aware of the difficulty of um, discussing this in the regular normal life. And I don't know. Um, so there's not much I can teach you like on the ships and all that, but I Phil just thought it would be of interest to you to know about this story. And um, so I told you about the, um, the, the, the beings in the hospital. So um, that's one of the searcher, when I was telling him my story in the hospital, when I left my body in that room with the lights and all the kids with cancer. And he said, those weren't kids with cancer. Those weren't ghosts or spirits. He said, and he said, when was that surgery? And I said, well, around 96. And he said, the hybrids in 96 um, from the literature drawings that people have done look like that. So the eyes were too big and they didn't add yet. They didn't add air yet. So you would have thought they were um, kids dying of cancer. And he said, I, he said, I bet those were all your kids, you know, welcoming you. But I, I, I don't know. All I know is that it's, um, um, I accepted to talk tonight just because I think there's things going on that we and we don't know. Oh, and I ate, I <laughs> just ate seeing that being um, because I, it reminds me of the one I had. Can you please change that slide? <laughs> I, I really can't stand it. But it's, uh, it's that face that was in that room in Lac, Lac Megatic and, um, I was so, so scared. Um, I tried to tell myself that if something bad was to happen to me, it would have happened already. Um, so I, I go on and I, I can go out outside now and take walks and I've started playing Pokemon Go again and not too long ago because my, my son said, oh, it's back in. So, you know, it's a reason for me to go out and take walks. Um, but I, I, it changed me uh, to my core. And I find myself also always looking at the sky. And every time I go by that park and it's right, it's still right beside my, I moved, but I moved uh, in the same neighborhood. And just going by that park, I just see it all. Like every time all over again, I just see the ship. I see the other man. I would like to know what he, what he has become, but I, you know, at the time, I was, um, uh, well, I was never able to, to find him and I was too scared to, right after to, to, to wait for him and ask him questions or answer his questions because maybe he remembered even less than I did. So basically that's, that's my story. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know how long I've been talking. Oh, you did, you did great, you did great. Well, and thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, so, so yeah, okay. So we've stopped the slide share and you're still on. And let me see, you're on phone batteries, right? So, so we'll, we'll cross our fingers and see how much, how much life you have. 